Hello, welcome back. I hope you're doing very well. If I look a bit hot and bothered today, it's 30 degrees in London, which Brits are not really built to deal with, so a bit flustered. Um, I got a DM from someone on Instagram a few days ago with a performance scenario they were trying to find a solution to. It's a little bit niche, but I thought I'd make a video about the solution I came up with, um, just because it might be useful to someone else. So this is the scenario that they described to me. They have eight audio tracks with, uh, you know, full of loops or stems, clips, whatever. And they want to keep that eight uh, tracks of audio um, on screen and available at all times. But at the same time, on tracks nine and ten, they wanted to have two plug-in synth tracks. And they wanted to be able to play those tracks and switch between those two tracks for playing without having to tab like this using the cursor keys because they wanted um, to, the, the focus. They didn't want to lose focus on these audio tracks. And there is a way to do that. And I'm going to show you show it to you now. Can't speak. So we've got our eight audio tracks for the clips here. They're empty. This is just for demo purposes. So if we look at these two um, synth tracks I've created, I've got one called bass, one called lead. They're just hype uh, presets. So to set this solution up, we go into the mixer and we want the I.O. tab and then we select our first uh, uh, first synth track, which is in this case bass. And we go down to where it says send to. This is the MIDI forwarding function. And we tap on that and we select our second track. So now when we play notes on track one or synth one, which is the bass, it is forwarding the MIDI to track two. Um, so if we play that now, you can hear that it's playing both of those. In fact, we can show that on the mixer. It's playing both of those tracks at the time. Now, obviously we don't want that. So what we're gonna do is go to macros and where is it? I haven't got my glasses, I can't see a thing. We're already on uh, crossfader. So we're gonna create two macros now, nice and easy. The first one, we press uh, plus to create it, track, and then we go down to bass, which is our first synth track, mixer, and mute. And then we're going to create another one, exactly the same way, but for our second track, which is lead, mixer, and mute. So you can see here that when we do this, we've got um, both of those muting in and out. You can see down here, but we don't want them to mute at the same time. So we're going to tap the second one and uh, hit the flip button and you can now see that it's alternated between these two. So we're essentially flipping the polarity of one of these mutes. So now we can play our bass or we can play our lead. So that's that bit of it done. So if we go back to our matrix view now, um, one of the issues with this is if we uh, go to launch now and we were to set the situation up as we wanted to, at the moment, we can play our synth. But if we go to launch, the second we launch a clip, it selects the track that that clip is on and we can no longer play our clip. So there, uh, sorry, our synth. So there's a really simple solution to that. We press and hold shift and then tap launch. And we have this button here that says tap in clip, select it, selects it. So if we uncheck that, we can now see that selecting clips doesn't alter the track focus. So if we stop all of our clips and we go over and we select our first track and go back again and go to note mode, we can play our two synths as we want. We can also launch clips or scenes but still retaining, oh, my crossfade is a bit wonky, while still retaining the access to the, um, to the synth tracks we've set up. Now, obviously I've just done this with two tracks, which is why the uh, crossfader is ideal. But if you wanted to have more tracks, you could daisy chain all of those synths together, um, you know, up to your eight, all daisy chained together. And you could set up touch macros so that you could re replicate this process with more than two tracks but i thought that was quite a nifty little solution to that problem um, i hope that was useful to the person that messaged me i also ho hope it's useful to anyone that watches this 
Um, as ever, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers, bye.